You know, you think to yourself, what, what, what in, enters a man that would be able to do such a thing? You know, I, I, I remember watching some of those, that was in the 1800s, with missionaries, but I also remember watching men make that decision in Mosul, Iraq, when ISIS came through. Our decisions many times are based on man and not God. Let me just say that again. Our decisions many times are based on man and not God. Fear, the fear of man, man pleasing. Proverbs says this, 29, 25, Proverbs says, the fear of man brings a snare. Let me just say that again. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in and puts his confidence in the Lord will be exalted and safe. Amen? You know, sometimes we people please to be liked. Have you ever done that or is that just me? Okay. We live in a society full of whether you are liked or not is based upon whether or not you have worth. You know, there's one thing. There's a couple of different sets of people. Those who people please to be liked and to have happiness. Can you say happiness? How many of you like to be happy? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. I agree with you. But if your aim is happiness and something comes along and your happiness goes, then what happens to you? If your aim with the Lord is a journey, then you expect things that might upset your boat of happiness that might come, right? But you know, you see, we are conditioned to believe that if you are not happy, there must be something wrong with somebody else. There's one or two things that happens typically. Those who want to be liked, the man please to be liked, and then there are those that will use your man pleasing to their advantage. Has anybody experienced that before? You see, this is the trap. This is the snare. And that's what it says in Proverbs. It says, the fear of man brings a snare. Matthew 10, 28, it says this, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. <clears throat> I have a lot of young men and sometimes young women that talk to me about business, starting business. I've helped many start businesses over the years. And I sometimes will have some people ask me, you know, what does it really mean to be really successful? What must I do? I said, you better be willing to lose everything. Your reputation and everything. Because if you're really going to go into a place of influence, if you're going to go into a place of growth, whatever that might be, I'm telling you right now, people will make judgments upon you. And if you worry about their words rather than God's promise, you will find yourself man-pleasing. There's a cost, and the cost is not the cost of the Lord. The cost is the cost of man. You see, you gain everything with Jesus. But if, if God sent his only son, and his only son, if I really look at what Jesus went through, you see, Jesus was rejected. So why are you working not to be rejected? You see, Jesus felt alone because he was. I mean, they couldn't even pray for him in the garden before he was going to be crucified. 
They slept. Right? You see, Jesus was also misunderstood many times by the religious because they couldn't see him for who he was. He was disappointed. He was tempted. He was tried. So why then do we think that God, when experience these things, if God's allowed Jesus to experience all of these things, then why not you? You see, God is more interested in your character as a son or a daughter than your comfort. That's why he brought the comfortor. You're going to need Holy Spirit in your uncomfortable, unhappy places to comfort you. That's who you need is him, his spirit, who he is. He didn't say, I'm going to come and send you into the world that you, nothing's, now everything's okay. No, you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through misunderstandings. You're going to go through loneliness. You're going to go through rejection. You're going to go through things where you just want to quit. If you fear man, you will not finish the race. Is this too much this morning? Okay, amen, hallelujah. John 5, 41 says this, I receive not glory from men. Can you say, I I receive not glory from men. I crave no human honor. Say it. And I look for no mortal fame. Okay, you all know there's places in you that you do want to know. Come on. There's places you want to know. Do they see how hard I work as a father? Do they know how hard I work as a mother? Does my employer see how hard I work? Am I the only one? Okay. I put this also in the message just for a little bit more in depth, kind of into what we can understand of this generation. And it says, starting in verse 41, it says, I'm not interested in crowd approval. I'm not interested in crowd approval. I'm going to tell you, you know, eight years ago, when Mandy and I found ourselves with about 90 different kids in a living room, getting baptized in the Spirit, right? Deliverances, demons being cast out one after the other, speaking in tongues. People said, y'all are a cult. (laughs) They did. What are y'all doing over there? We're not doing anything. That's it. We're just walking in what the Father says. We are being obedient unto the Father. When you chase after something, I'm telling you right now, man will judge you for it. He says, I'm not interested in the crowd approval. And do you know why? Because I know you and your crowds. I know that love, especially God's love, is not on your working agenda. I came with the authority of my Father, and you either dismiss or avoid me. If anyone came acting self-important, you would welcome them with open arms. How do you expect to get anywhere with God when you send all your time jockeying for position with each other and ranking your rivals and ignoring God? We have a fear of man problem in the church, not a fear of God. And what do you mean by that, Pastor? Aren't we to have no spirit of fear? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. But it is the fear of God that brings the freedom to have no fear of man or of principalities or demons or devils. Come on, guys. If it was to the fear of man or pleasing man, I'm telling you right now, Mandy and I would have quit many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. But we had more fear of the Lord than we did man. But we still had fear of man. It still hurt when things happen, when we walk things out. But I'm telling you, the harvest is almost here. I believe it is ripe. I believe it is time for us, in some of your sharpening of your sickle, for the harvest moment has you to deal with your bluntness of fear of man. When's the last time you walked into a place and you knew that God said, I want you to go pray, and you said, no, I'm not going to. I don't think they'll do da 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 Right?
I'm not interested in crowd approval. Even within business, I've had many, many naysayers, even in business. And I would even come home to Mandy or I'd just be like, are we going down the wrong path here? I'm hearing this, that, and the other. She says, what does the Father say? What does the Father say? What does the Father say? Some places I don't know, so I need to get with my brother who I know is going to pray over me. Whether it be Pastor Doug, whether it be Pastor Broda, whether it be leadership here. Hey, I need to have some agreement right now because this is what I'm hearing. If I would have listened to that, we wouldn't be where we are today. Proverbs 1.7 says this, The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is a beginning and the principal and choice part of knowledge. It's starting point and its essence, but fools despise skillful and godly wisdom, instruction, and discipline. I'm going to tell you right now, what we do here is for God. Let me just, re- just re- reaffirm for you guys. I don't do this for me. We don't do this for some building. We do this for the Lord. We do this unto God. It is the reverence and the fear of the Father that brings freedom into your life and makes everything else that is screaming at you run for its life. Because there is a place when in you, and you've got to understand, are you wanting to be liked? Are you wanting to be liked? Because if you're wanting to be liked, that many times you're going to have that place of where you're going to fear man over God. Now, in Isaiah 22, it says this. It says, stop regarding man whose breath of life is in his nostrils for so little time. For why should he be esteemed? Where is your decision-making process right now Typically, is it in the fear of the Lord or is it in the fear of man? How do you make your decisions? Do you see what I'm saying? What does your prayer life look like? If it's a fear of God or it's a fear of man? Do you understand what I'm saying? What is leading you? And I'm telling you right now, most times, and I I spend so much time with, with people all the time every week. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me, let me put it to you this way. Is it the voice? What, have you, has anybody ever experienced the Lord giving you a word for your life? Okay. All right. Praise God. If not, I want you to come up and we're going to pray over you. You're going to get a word today in Jesus' name, right? How many of you have had a bad word from man that's really bothered you? Which one do you hear more? there's your level of understanding. Do you see what I'm saying? It's the fear of what man is doing or not doing, saying or not saying, is the thing that drives you, or is it the voice of God? Is this the truth of the Father? Is it Jesus manifesting in your life right now? Stop regarding man whose breath of life is in his nostrils for such a little time. For why should he be esteemed? Now, I'm not talking about, it says clearly, to love God and love others. To be at peace, amen, with others. Amen? Hallelujah? If, if you can. But who comes first? God. Not man. God. It is only, you have, it's impossible to love man without receiving the love of God. You can't do it. It's impossible. Why? Because the fear of man is still working on you. It's still playing on you, your senses, your emotions. You see, it is the fear of the Lord that will bring absolute wisdom into your life for every situation that you find yourself in. The fear of the Lord brings massive freedom to go, you know what? And I'm going to tell you, the result of listening to the Lord versus man, I can tell you every time when I go, why in the world did I do that again? Why did I do that again, Mandy? Well, you feared this. Or, Mandy, why did I do that again? Well, you feared that. 
But I can tell you, every place that I have feared the Lord with the promise that he's given over my life, not only has it come true, not only has it come to pass, but it's come to pass more than I could ever ask or imagine. Every single time. Through the fear of the Lord. We miss we miss it. We think it's this. We think the fear of the Lord is something that is to be beaten into us. It is something to be that we've got to walk these things out. No, the fear of the Lord is coming to the Father and saying, I am human and I can't walk these things out. I am not the creator. You are. I am the creation and I need the creator to speak into the areas that I am dying. Right? That's the fear of the Lord working. That's the fear of the Lord, the aspect. I mean, for example, do we come in here and have a reverential fear of the Lord? Do we come in here and just go, what is pastor going to say today? What's the worship going to do today? What is, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to be uncomfortable today? Where's the fear of God? Because I'm going to tell you right now, we would all be like John on the Isle of Patmos if Jesus appeared to us with eyes of burning fire, right? And voices of many waters. Come on, guys. You would be on your face in the fear of the Lord. Where is that reverential fear that needs to come forth again in his body that brings forth the actual truth of God, the, the revelation of God, and, and the understanding that you can only come to him by way of him? You see what I'm saying? Let me just go to Isaiah 2, 20 through 22, and I'll start in 20 once again in the message today. I also gave it to you in the Amplified Classic. But on that day, men and women will take sticks and stones. They've decked out with gold and silver to look like gods and then worship. And they will dump them in any ditch or gully. Then run for the rocks and the caves and the cliffs and the hideouts to hide from the terror of God, from his dazzling presence, when he assumes his full stature on earth, towering and terrifying, quit scrapping and fawning over mere humans, so full of themselves, so full of hot air. Can't you see there's nothing to them? Wow. Wow. Wow, what is that? What is that? Every knee shall bow on that day. Every knee shall bow on that day. You'd be like, Pastor, this doesn't sound very loving, right? This is what he's showing us, that we can bow today. We can walk in the kingdom today. I don't want to be on that day running because I know I didn't bow. I don't want to be on that day running, right? Amen, hallelujah. Galatians 1.10, it says this. It says, now I am trying to win the favor of men or of God. Do I seek to please men? If I were still seeking popularity with men, I should not be a bondservant of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Hallelujah. You know, Mandy and I watched uh, Jesus Revolution the other night. I don't know how many of you watched that. You know, it's about, about the, the movement that, you know, the hippie movement, and uh, Right? Some of you are um, products of maybe that. Mandy and I had a lot of really those who really spoke into our lives that were products of that. You know, and, and, and in the movie, it was reminding me too, just the heart of either we're going to fear the church or we're going we're to fear the Lord and what his movement is doing today. Right? So Chuck Smith, he could have said, you know what? Yeah, let's get these dirty, nasty hippies out of here. That stink. But he knew that God was doing something. And God used broken vessels. I love what they showed in that too. If you watch the movie, you saw that even the ministry was still flawed. Because God uses broken men and women. Amen? Hallelujah. And so it was so refreshing to even watch that going, okay, thank you, Lord. Yeah, you, you do broken vessels. But if you have any fear of man in you, you will miss the move of God. You will walk out when he's present. Because there's something in you that wants to produce something rather than see the presence move in a way that you've never seen it move before. And here's the other thing. This is what I've been seeing in a lot of us. And what I mean, the, when I talk about the church, I'm talking about us. Amen, hallelujah? Okay. 
A lot of religious things have been welling up to the surface for God to move away. Because why? Because what used to work in the past in your religious ways no longer work in what God's doing today. He hasn't changed. His word has not changed. But right now he is doing something different for a lot of us that have served the Lord for a long time. It's hard for us to get out of our own religious ways. And so what God is doing is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Now, Romans 12, 18, I don't want to get too far down without going here. It says, if possible, as far as it depends on you, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? There we go. Do you feel like you're at peace with everyone? I guess that's a no. telling you if you allow the Father, the fear of the Lord to come upon your life, start to talk to the areas that you know he needs to talk to, deal in the areas that you need transformation, allow those things that the Father come and go before you. I'm going to tell you right now, there is no situation, no man that will stand before you, no woman that will stand before you that can take your peace away. That's how you live at peace with all men. It's not based upon what they do. How many ever thought that? If they would just do this, I would have a lot more peace in my life. Right? Hallelujah. It's not about you. It's not about them. It's about you. It's about you and the Father. Most times when people come to me with issues, well, you know, my husband or my wife or, you know, this friend of mine and this friend, you know, can can you just tell me something to tell them, Pastor, that I can just give them some truth that they'll just get it? And every time the father quickens me and says, son, ask him about them. Well, what's your part to play? What's your ownership in this? Where are you at? Are you wanting to be pleased? Are you wanting to please them? This is when manipulation comes into the, 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 I mean, manipulation comes in so quickly with the fear of man. Man-pleasing brings in manipulation like you've never seen. Here's the other what's crazy is I didn't realize too is just how much I had generationally of, of me in that that I've been taught through our generations of how to please man or how to use man to get pleased. Romans 12, 17 through 20 says this. It says, Repay no evil for evil, but take thought of what is honest and proper and noble, aiming to be above reproach in the sight of everyone. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals upon his head. You ever had to do that? You ever had to do that? It's not easy, is it? But I'm going to tell you, by that time, the fear of the Lord so come upon you, and the love of God so come upon you, and and the, the identification of who you are so come upon you that you can't. There's not a heaping place. There is, when you do it, it might heap on them, but you have love for them. You see? You have compassion for them. I'm not stepping on too many toes this morning, am I? Okay. Matthew 10, 32 through 33 says there, Therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before men and confesses me out of the state of oneness with me, I will also acknowledge him before my Father who is in heaven. And I will confess that I am abiding in him 
But whoever denies and disowns me before men, I also will deny and disown him before my Father who is in heaven. I'm going to tell you, there was a great test of the fear of man when COVID started. It was almost like a, it was almost like a test, actually. And in many ways, some of us failed. In many ways, some of us succeeded. It's not a measure based on what man said, but I think in all of us, it's an opportunity. I think we are coming out of the greatest time to try to split us apart and put us into isolation when we're supposed to come together as a body and, and, and agree and, 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 and praise God. Amen? I believe it is a boomerang effect of what the enemy wanted for death. It will turn around and hit him right in the face because the life is going to come through it. Amen. Hallelujah. I saw a lot of people come against a lot of people, a lot of fear men in those times. Did you get the shot? Did you get this? Did you do that? Now, I'm not talking about whether you did or not. That's between you and the Lord. But what I'm saying is there was a fear of man aspect corporately to try to deal with us in the individual level. But where do you want to stand with the next issue of the day that comes forth? Do you want to stand based upon what man says, or do you want to stand based upon what God is saying? I remember, too, I... I, I There was a lot of judgment on even just believing for healing for people during COVID who had COVID. Why can't I lay my hands on them? Why? <laughs> well, I mean, doesn't the Lord say, what is this? All of a sudden now this goes out the window. All of a sudden this is no, no longer a place for us. But it was a real test. It was a real test. <clears throat> You see, the fear of man at its core, the fear of man at its core, am I putting you all to sleep? All right. The fear of man at its core is a faith issue. It is. Not fearing those who can kill the body, right? How did this tribesman receive the love of the Father, and then actively, willingly, openly deny the chief priest at the time that he would not renounce Jesus and watch his sons die, and then watch his wife die. What brings somebody to that type of decision? Let me ask you this. Could you make the same decision? It would be hard. Gut-wrenching. But you are actually, you don't even know it, but there are many of you sitting here today that are in the same place as that, our brother, who made that decision. God is asking you, can you allow this to die in your life? If it takes from me. Is that more than I am in your life? You see, it might not be physical per se. At some point it could be, right? I always saw myself losing my head for the Lord. I told Mandy, I don't think I'm going to live long, baby. I always saw myself in the, in the guillotine losing my head for Jesus. It might come to pass. I don't know. But you see, I'd rather live in community in the journey with the Father right now. Not some future time, but eternity starts right now for you. Today. You see, we fear rejection. How many of you fear rejection? I do. Sometimes. Right? What does that mean? We fear disapproving. We don't want to be disapproved. 
We fear man's approval, not, not getting it. You know, how many of you have a prayer life? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you end up finding yourselves praying for things you want? I do that. Okay. But my real prayer points are the things that I need prayer for. So for what I mean by that. You know, you send me things like, Pastor, I, I, I've, I've lost a few employees. Pastor, I've, I've, uh, I don't know if our marriage is going to work. Pastor, I don't, uh, I don't know this. You know, I'm so excited because you finally have a specific prayer to pray now. Because many times you're religiously looking for something to pray about. Or you think you've got this, but I'm telling you right now, this is how the body will come together out of the fear of man, that we will actually ask each other to agree for things that we know that we are struggling with for us to be free from. Yet transparency. Now, don't get me wrong. Not everybody is supposed to be that for you. But there are, should be a few in your life that don't have anything but God's will for your life when they pray over you. But you should be able to go to them and say, here's, my, here's where I'm struggling with the fear of man. Here's where I'm struggling with these things. Here's the thing that I cannot let go and let die. Here's the thing that I keep wanting to keep up, and I'm denying Jesus every time I do it. Can you, can you come alongside, and can we, can we agree together? Can we pray together, right? This is your portion right here. If you fear rejection, that's your prayer. Don't run from it. Don't act like it's not there. That's your prayer. If you fear this uh, being not approved of, there's your prayer right there. Because the fear of man at its core is a faith issue. I'm going to go ahead and have the... Uh, Worship team, come up. I've got time, but I do want to give time on this because I believe systemically in us, here's my prayer. Pastor said, and we, 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 we met the other day, Pastor Doug asked me to come on he had about 40 plus leaders to come on with Mike Bickle to pray over the nation of Israel, but also to pray over our bodies. <clears throat> I have found that people pleasing will make you hurt the ones God has you to be in community with while trying to gain the approval of those who have no interest in you. I said, people pleasing, I have found, will make you hurt the ones God has for you to be in community with while trying to gain the approval of those that have no interest in you. I believe now is the time to see if we're going to love each other in the body. Jesus was not spared rejection. I mean, what if he would have thrown down the cross and said, forget it. Clearly today you haven't even got it. You just beat me with every inch and still you're spitting on me. Forget it. Go have your wayward ways. But oh, how we do that with our own cross. But he didn't, praise God. You know, Leonard Ravenhill said this. He says, there's one truth that you knew about a man who was leaving the city with the cross on his back. You knew that man was never coming back. <clears throat> it 
is so exciting for me when I see a brother leaving with a cross or sister leaving with a cross on her back. Because I know the old is gone now. How does Peter, how in the world does Peter, this bold man for God, bold man for Jesus, find himself shriveled up and denying Jesus when a, a little slave girl comes up and says, did you know him? Wow. You see, because what happened was Jesus said, can you pray? Just pray. Can you pray? And it says after he didn't pray, that Peter followed at a distance. And then when they took him in and they arrested him, and all looked like it was lost, that's when he denied him. But it started with the prayer. Look, some of you can do it this way, and some of you can do it multiple ways. It's whatever way the Lord will give you. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're missing out. You're missing out if you don't have the opportunity. I'm talking about in your truck, in the store, with your family, with your brothers and sisters here, that you're not constantly interacting with Jesus. You're not constantly interacting and praying and getting the comfort of the Holy Spirit. to our family has been great. I mean, gut-wrenching type of cost. And it has given me such a reverent fear of the Lord and such a beautiful relationship with Him when nobody else wanted a relationship with me. I just finally stopped. I said, I can't do this anymore. Clearly, they don't like me. <laughs> Clearly, they don't want me. And if I do, they're still wanting something from me. And if I don't do it right, then they just want to go ahead and reject me again. And there's nothing I'm ever going to do that's ever going to satisfy them, Father. He says, I know. He said, but can you love them? Hell no, I can let love them. says, I love you. And he says, I've, I've, I've allowed all these things, Jason, in your life to come. What's been done to you, what you've done to others, I've allowed it all. Why would you do such a thing to me so that you have a dependency on me like you've never had? And not only the dependency on me like you've never had, but to know that you know what man will always fail you but I will never fail you he says but here's the thing when you come to me in that and you know and you have the fear of the Lord which is the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of freedom in my aspect you can say the worst things to me and it means no place inside of me because I have the love of the Father I have a spirit. I have the comforter. You are not my comforter. Your words do not have to be my comfort. So when you give me your flesh, I can say, yes. Thank you, Father. That they are seeing now through, through what you are doing in me where they can be. I'm still a work in progress, guys. I always will be. Will be for eternity. Learning about the goodness and the glory of the Father. Amen. 
at its core, if man pleasing is in you, it's a place because you don't believe you are approved by God. you would like to be broken free of this? Me too. That's what we're going to agree for today. It'll happen gradually, but instantly deliverance happens. Healing happens over time. How many of you love your reputation? There ain't no hand that went up. To gain everything, you have to lose everything. To gain everything, you have to lose everything. What do I mean by that? To gain everything, you have to give everything to him. If there's a sliver of man fearing, pleasing in you, you're going to want to get to these all the time. Can I be this? Do I have this? Do you approve? Because a lot of times when you speak the truth of God, this is what it feels like. You feel very much alone. Especially in this world today. feel hypocritical when you man please you know that's what I love what Jesus did Jesus didn't go to the synagogue but Jesus went to the seashore he didn't go to the ones who had it all figured out in the Torah but he went to the ones that were of commerce, of walking with their hands, working with their hands. I set down the leadership this past week and I said, let me just give you the accusations over us as leaders. Let's find the places that are true. And if they are, we're going to repent. And we're going to walk on. But if they're not, we're not going to agree. We're going to say, no, these aren't over us. I'm going to tell you right now, I've had us as a leadership together. We're in the fire. His holy fire is on us right now. Us as leaders, are we willing to look at our own stuff or not? Do we we want more production than we want presence? Speak to us, Dad. Do we? You know, there's nothing more beautiful than look around a room of leaders that are going I don't know speak to me dad is that in me am I am I giving from my woundedness or I'm giving from his 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 anointing I don't know Abba speak to me am I bleeding out on you or am I loving you I don't know speak to me Can you ask yourself the same questions? You know, there's times that even after a message, I'll go in with Mandy and I say, was that the flesh right there? 
Was that why I wanted to do this? Sometimes she'll go, yeah, that was. If you suffer with man pleasing, if you suffer with wanting man to like you, rather than you having the ability to love man, then that's what I want to pray over you this morning. We want to be seen. It's natural. But what is coming in this harvest right now, I'm telling you, the religious will not understand it. They're not going to understand it. And they're going to use every opportunity. The enemy is going to use every opportunity to try to use within the church the thing that tries to push away what God has. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, can we take inventory as sons and daughters and say, is that you, Father? Is that your spirit? Is that your truth? Is that what you have for me right now? Or am I still worried about my husband, my wife? There's times when Mandy will say, can you just give me the answer? No, I can't. That is between you and Daddy. I got some ideas you can look, but that's between you and him. Whose approval do you seek? Whose approval do you seek? Whose approval do you seek? Jesus says, I don't seek the approval of man. The fear of the Lord brings freedom, brings wisdom. It brings peace. God's showing you it's a difference between fear of man and fear of the Lord. It brings an ability if you are walking by the fear of the Lord, you will not speak a word to a stranger or a friend that is not the love of the Father. You will stop with your reactions and your responses will be holy. They will be reverent. They will be straight from the throne room. I'm telling you right now, God has something for us in this hour and it is not what we've seen. It is not what we have experienced. It is something greater in Jesus' mighty name. It is not the fear that will, that will guide you any longer. It is the faith of God to say and speak to the mountain, you must leave my life because you're not of God. The Refuge is located at 130 Gulf Freeway North in League City, Texas. Come join us Sundays at 1030 a.m. We value his presence and we value his people. Find out more at www.therefuge.live.